Alright, welcome back guys to the final review on the suspension tutorial part 2. Pumped to show you all about it. To start off, let's do the torsion bar. That's right, the torsion bar. And it can flex like this on the axle. And you can make it stiffer or not stiff by extending the axle. And it will not really harm the actual connector piece. So that's common on some tanks. Next up we have a awesome leaf spring setup. You can compress it like this. It has also got side to side motion too. So, And the reason there's axles right there is to actually keep it from moving side to side laterally. So that's actually uh, important to have there. You could suspend this with shocks too, but I think having leaf springs makes it stiff enough. But then again, it's your design, so you can do whatever you want uh, for your whatever vehicle you want to put this on. So this is common on Jeeps and some other off-road vehicles. So it's really cool. Next up, we have a the or the air ride suspension system, and it can be compressed like that. And this is where the chassis would connect to, and this is obviously the wheel axle. So, and you can compress it in the cylinder head, and you can increase the stiffness. So, and this is obviously for a rear wheel suspension setup. Coming up next, in the in the third to last one, we have a tank suspension setup, similar to um, the tandem pivot on the first episode. So. And it can actually rotate independently, so independent of each other. And you can increase the stiffness depending on the size of your rubber band. So, and where my finger, where my hand is, is where the actual chassis will connect to. Here's a look from the back side. So, just another cool, crazy design for you guys to possibly use or develop more in for your own creations. So guys, like I said, I won't be creating instructions for these, so you feel free to pause the video and try to manipulate it and create it for yourself. So, this is actually a th similar to the independent suspension. It's the three, three uh, pivot, I guess, suspension type. And you might be saying, oh, Design Junkie 58, where the heck's your shock absorber? Well, I'm using that at the moment. And this is actually where you would uh, connect it to and actually anchor it up top here. So... It uses a universal joint and a CV joint down there for the wheel hub. This actually is a newer wheel hub, by the way. And you can control it and steer it with this piece. Or the axle, I should say, not this piece. So, it's actually a really cool design. Alright, so that's that. Moving along, we have the highly anticipated 5-link multi-link rear suspension setup. This thing is awesome. It's the smaller mock-up version of my, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, trophy truck. And I am just really pumped to show you all about this. So this is the one I developed most. I spent the most time designing this suspension setup. And uh, it's just really, really cool. So it's upside down right now. This actually is where the chassis would connect to right here, this black part. And it uses five links, so I'll show you the five. One, two, three, four. And then the fifth one is this tow ball link right here. So here's a look at the side being compressed. And as you can see right there, the links actually pivot forward. I'll show it better to you from the front. You see those white elements or connectors actually bending? That's actually because when you compress the suspension, this link actually 
needs to bend forward, which is why it does that. So. So this is your drivetrain right here. Connecting to the differential. And you have independent suspension on the side. And that's actually why there's a universal joint there, so it can actually flex with the suspension, a independent suspension setup link. So you can you can push it downward like this and side to side, just because of the way the suspension system is um, oriented and set up. So I think I'm thinking about using this in one of my future creations. I don't know yet for sure though, but. Just thinking about it. And so these links here actually help the lateral movement stay to a minimum. And also it helps the axle stay put so they don't slide out of the U-joint. So. And I just lost the rubber connector piece. I can put that back on easy. There we go. So, there's a look at it from the side real quick before we wrap up the review. Alright guys, that's about all for the suspension tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and find this review helpful. Stay tuned for more reviews guys. Excuse me. See you later.